Are you looking for a new job? And if so, how's the job search going? In this video, I'll look at job search strategies that are particularly useful in an economic downturn, but can also be used in a hopefully brighter future. By the end of this video, you should be more confident in being able to find yourself that new job that you're looking for. Hi, I'm Carol Mould. With my background in project management and organizational psychology, my channel focuses on the intersection between these areas, namely soft skills. For more advice and tips on how to develop your soft skills and live your best life, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Tuesday. The pandemic has directly affected employment and many companies have been forced to close their doors temporarily. This has resulted in several companies making the difficult decision to temporarily or permanently let go of part of their staff to keep their heads above water. At the same time, however, there are still some sectors that actually need more staff than usual. In this video, I'll discuss strategies for looking for immediate stopgap jobs to keep you going, whilst also looking at strategies for finding longer term work that meets your aspirations. So if you're looking for an immediate job just to get you through the current situation, think about shops and supermarkets who are looking for extra cashiers, packers, floor managers, warehouse, logistics and distribution staff. Home delivery. A lot of people are getting home delivery, be it food or pet supplies or anything else for the home. And they need delivery drivers. You may not necessarily need your own car warehouse logistics staff, dispatchers, security and maintenance staff. In the health sector, retired nurses are often going back to work. They're also looking for phone support staff and safety managers in hospitals. In cleaning, there's extra cleaning required in schools, businesses and hospitals. Distance learning, there are jobs for language teachers, subject tutors for school children and adult learning course teachers as well. And then support workers and carers, those are also in big demand at the moment. So consider some of those areas if you need an immediate job just to keep the wolf away from the door and to get some income coming in. Now I've said that these are immediate job opportunities and earlier I had a slide saying dream job versus immediate job. Now I'm not for a minute saying that these jobs are the opposite of a dream job and perhaps your dream job is in these areas which is great because there's a lot more opportunity in these areas right now. However, if these are not your areas of your dream job, then let's look further and see how we can look for longer term solutions alongside doing an immediate job. Landmark research on how people find good jobs was conducted in the early 70s by Mark Granovetter. And this information remains relevant today, despite the big changes in roles and recruitment practices that we've seen in recent years. What Granovetter found was that most jobs, and especially good ones, were attained not through direct application or other formal means, such as submitting a resume in response to a listing or job board, but rather most jobs are found through personal connections. These connections told the applicant about the position or perhaps recommended him or her to someone inside the organization. But which connections are the best? And part of the research found that weak connections are actually the strongest. So it's critical to understand which of your personal contacts are the most useful. Granovetter found that you're more likely to find jobs through personal contacts who are not too close to you, that speak to you infrequently and work in different job roles than yours. He came up with a wonderful experience expression, the strength of weak ties. And many other researchers have since confirmed the idea that diverse personal networks are the best way to find a new job. These contacts might come from your neighborhood, university, high school, associations or sports or hobby groups that you might partake in. There might even be people you met once on vacation or on a park bench. Activating these connections is a very powerful job seeking strategy that will allow you to secure a great position in truly tough times, such as we're experiencing now in 2020. So this is the process that you can follow. First thing is to create your contact list. List 100 weak ties without yet making any contact. And then we want to rank that list by the possibilities you feel that they might offer you and their willingness to help you. 
Why do we need to list so many? Well, firstly, it's simple statistics. The probability of any one person leading you to the perfect job will be low. So you have to tap many to improve your odds. Second, and even more important, because of the weak nature of these contacts, it won't be immediately obvious who can be the most helpful. When you work on expanding the list to reach your 100, you might add quite unexpected people, including some truly great ones. Other ideas for candidates for your weak ties include former bosses, colleagues and professors, consultants, lawyers, auditors, suppliers, clients, and so on. Some will be potential employers and others will be sources of information. Look for ties in sectors that are likely to be stronger than most in the coming years and in which you would really like to work. Once you've ranked everyone on those two factors, the attractiveness of the possibilities they can offer, given their company role and connections, and their willingness to help you, which will depend on the quality of your relationship, even if it was limited or distant, then you can start making connections with that list. Start at about number 10 for practice. You don't want to start with your really best candidate and uh, and not feel confident to make the contact. Once you've contacted some part way down the list, then go back to the top and move quickly through these connections. You want to then close the list when you have enough leads to give you a significant chance of getting a job. You also want to manage the leads and keep track of who you've spoken to and when and what the outcome was. You need to both be proactive and also be organized. I'll show you on the next slide an example spreadsheet that you can download to help you to be organized and then seal the deal. This is where traditional job hunting advice comes in strongly. Make sure your resume is up to date. Make sure your LinkedIn profile is updated accordingly. Practice answering interview questions. Research the company and make sure you know a lot about them and can tie your information and your value to see how you can contribute to that company. Here's an example of the spreadsheet. This spreadsheet was created by Claudio Fernandez Areas, and I'll put a link in the description below so that you can download this for yourself and use this to help you in your job search. You can see that you put the contact name, give it a priority and say what the next action is that you need to do with that contact. Give yourself a deadline, put down the actual date that you contacted that person. If this has resulted in an interview, you can keep track of that. Put down which company this is. In the last column, you put down the probability or confidence level that you think you might have in getting an offer from that company. At the top of the spreadsheet, it takes the combined probability of getting at least one offer based on the probabilities that you give from the individual firms. If you want to do further reading, these are some books that I strongly recommend. First one is Repurpose Your Career by Mark Miller with Susan Leahy. The second one is updated every year. This is from Richard Bowles, and it's called What Color Is Your Parachute Followed by the Year? Now, this is a great book that I use to help advise clients on their careers, and I buy this book at least every three to four years. It is updated with the latest information every year. So if you don't have a copy, that is a really good book to get hold of. Another great book that I've read that I think is really good is called Pivot by Jenny Blake. With the subtitle, The Only Move That Matters is Your Next One. There's some really great advice in that book that I'd advocate that you read. I hope you now have more confidence in your ability to find a new job and I wish you every success with the challenge. Please watch my other videos in the leadership series. If you like this video please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. Hit the bell to be notified when I release a new video every Tuesday. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time. Bye!